What do you do to get motivated when you're just not feeling it? I remember that if I'm not motivated, I haven't got any money. Um, so it's a funny question. I started working for Crowdcast um, last year and Sai asked me a question about how I keep myself motivated because I work for myself. And I said, after 21 years, if I haven't got that sussed, I am screwed. So I'm not sure I have advice for anybody else because I just pull the, the, pull the socks up. I was about to say, pull, pull my pants up. <laughs> you big boy pants. <laughs> yes, exactly. I was mixing two expressions together then. I, <laughs> I, pull, I pull my socks up and I just get on with it. So um, to, to be honest, the other thing I do is I get my list out and I rewrite it. Um, so, you know, I kind of, that's like a little comfort blanket of rewriting my list. But I just have to get on with it because there's nobody else to tell me everything's okay. I guess some people phone a friend, they might go for a walk with the dog, you know, a bit of that, but essentially just giving myself a kick at the backside. What do I you think do? We found our 15 second, second clip, haven't we? <laughs> <laughs> You're talking about pulling your pants up, right? Uh, quick answer from me then: music. It can change my mood. I'll stick some music on, like you say, go make a cup of tea, or whatever. Something banging soul, and and that's it. I'm there and I'm ready. So uh, that one works for me. That's a much better bit of advice than mine. Okay, so I've had many, many years to do a lot of work on myself. <laughs> right? I've had many years to get it very, very wrong and to learn how to get it right. Um, and I've had some dark times, really dark times in my life that I've had to overcome as well. So I am very good at self-analyzing myself. So if I'm not feeling it and I'm not motivated, rather than trying to push myself, I take time out to say, why am I not feeling it? Is it going against what I truly believe? Is it something I don't really want to do? Is it time to look at what I'm doing and why I'm doing it? What's the purpose behind it? Or am I just feared of something? Or am I just being goddamn lazy? You know, what is going on for me? Because, and then I, I have a word with myself. And if, you know, if my motivation is to achieve something and I'm just holding back, you know, some days you just feel like, oh, I can't be bothered. Yeah. And it's okay to do that now and again. Don't tell your bosses, but it's okay to do that now and again. But as long as, you know, you don't wallow in that and that you've then got a plan and you're saying, am I tired? Have I overstretched it? Have I forgotten my purpose? Have I forgotten the vision? Do I, I need to talk to somebody because I don't really know what's going on? Maybe I just need to air it. I think sometimes a lot of people, we have things going on, we don't understand them, but we try and talk to ourselves, and it's like your head talking to your heart. You don't really know what's going on and you need to share it with another person to just get some clarity and right size, whatever the issue is. So yeah, I look internally and, and deeply to why am I not feeling it? So morning routine, as, as I mentioned before, so daily journaling, I have to say as well, I didn't, I didn't, I wasn't going to mention this, but I do make my husband bring me a cup of coffee in bed as well, otherwise, <laughs> so points game over, <laughs> so that needs to be in there as well, so yeah, morning, morning um, journaling, yoga, meditation, um, biggest thing for me is reconnecting with my, with my vision, um, if I am feeling rubbish or stuck or overwhelmed or just down in the weeds and, and demotivated, like I can't even, I can't make it happen, then reconnecting with my vision is the easiest way to get back in line. And for me, uh, what works is, well, ideally climbing a mountain, but at the moment it's going to the woods and just wandering and remembering why I'm doing all this, remembering why I'm working. Uh, remembering my why and and then the next right step appears it sounds a bit woo but that that's what works for me and I can imagine that for some people that that the panic of stepping away from it when they already don't feel motivated and they think right like, like you said I need to be getting on with something I need to get back on this treadmill rather than just taking a step back I mean that's got to be what a lot of people think isn't it yeah yeah I, I, I keep coming back to it but the recruitment industry is is just it's it's the KPI problem, right? Is that if I just make this many calls, I get this results? I, I I don't think it's that simple. No. Um, no, I think you're right. I think I think if we can reconnect with the vision, get the right next step, and then the the little details and the steps they just get collapsed. Yeah, I like what Stevens just said. He said, um, "I think we're gonna we're gonna reboot ourselves. Yeah, we'll do a bit of a control alt delete." Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean it's tough. I mean, I think the, sometimes um, 
sometimes there is merit in saying this is not necessarily the the best answer because people actually you know, have got to go and turn up and perform. But sometimes there's somebody who said it's just, just taking time out, mm -hmm. whether it's during the day, stopping, putting everything down, going out for a walk around the block, going, getting a coffee, just clearing your head. Um, if it's something more significant than that, take longer time out and just get your head around whatever it is you need to get your head around. Go and particularly physical exercise, doing something completely different. Um, quite often, just the, the, the repetition, particularly in, in our industry where there are nuances, but there's a lot of repetition, particularly in the management as well as the operational processes, that you've got to go and level that in some shape or form with other things. And that's always, always I'm always a great belief and believer and fan of um, you know, external, you know, extracurricular sort of activities, sort of sports, whatever thing, things that actually go and give you something else to think about. Because that does actually go and sort of reduce the intensity of what we do. Um, but other than that, the other thing I would say is, again, you've missed a question here. If we're looking at the questions you're going to, you're going to, going to ask about motivating people in the office, that's all right. The, the two, the two are linked. Is that is that the challenge that we have is if you're a leader in a business and you're a manager of people, hmm. and sometimes you can you can wake up and you're just not up for it. You know, you've had a late night, something happened, the dogs died, or whatever it might be, and and you've got to, I think. Put on a game face and you've got to somehow maintain positivity and however rough you might be feeling or however much demotivated occasion you might feel you've got to go and give a uh, uh, you've, you've got to give a, a presence of, of of positivity it can't be inauthentic yes at the end of the day people you know you've got to be authentic in the way you operate and you've got to be consistent in the way that you behave but you've got to maintain you you're responsible for making things happen and and if you're not feeling motivated you've got to go home and deal with it rather than deal with it in the office Okay, so so in that scenario, then it's a bit more. I've got to put on a performance. It's my job, so therefore, yep. Yep. It's, it's part of what I do, rather than it being inauthentic. How many? How, how many? How many of us? I'm sure you've, you've seen the same. Have been in an office environment where the leader, the manager, wears their heart on their sleeve, which can be endearing in a personal environment. It's absolutely hopeless in my mind in a in an office environment, a work environment. You've got to go and lead from from the front. And you've got to, you know, and you're the tone you set, the tone that, set, that runs through the entire physical office and maybe the whole kind of organisation. And that's tricky, isn't it? It is tricky. It is tricky. And again, there's probably, um, you know, a, a, a couple of different perspectives from this, really. But now, I'm not ever not motivated i'm always motivated um but i think that's something that comes with sort of experience and understanding yourself and what works for you and also being in a privileged situation that i do what i want when i want for who i want how i want um so um but i do think having a routine of some sort is really important i'm never going to be i really admire you know, the five o'clock club that get up and do meditation and yoga and, um, and, you know, write a journal and all that kind of stuff. And I've tried all those things, but they don't really work for me. What does work for me is starting the day off well. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I completely think that's a really good thing to do. But if I'm not just feeling it, why? Why am I not feeling it? That's normally because I'm feeling physically or mentally run down and then you need to understand what's caused that are you working with a client or a candidate that you're just not gelling with or are you overworked or you're not got enough work on or um are you physically feeling you know like you need to take some time out so for me the biggest thing is understanding why you're not feeling motivated and then doing something about it but that's taken me a long time to get to this stage. Um, and I do think for me, a little bit of a routine or just having a little mm -mm -mm of something you really love. So for me, if I'm feeling a bit, mm, I'll just put on a really classic Formula One race or a really good <laughs> MotoGP race or a really good dance tune or something that's going to get me going, mm, 
this is okay yeah. we're all right we, we, we can do this and yeah motivation comes from different sources and lots of different people some people need to take time out and mm. meditate or do yoga I take my dog for a walk I'm very fortunate I live in the countryside I've got beauty all around me it's very difficult not to be motivated in these environments and in this environment but yeah loud music drive a car really fast maybe a little bit too fast or watch cars being driven or motorbikes being driven really fast that's what motivates me cool and also exactly the thing you said at the start which is if you can get your personal circumstances right with your role and your organization yeah. and the people within it then I guess that that's you know taking the problem away more often before it actually occurs and understanding why you do what you do so I mean your know, recruitment's a funny game isn't it I mean we all go into it for different reasons because we want to help people or we want to make lots of money but actually the best recruiters are somewhere I think that sit between the two they recognize that when we're um, filling a job or working with a candidate we're enhancing a business and enhancing somebody's career and th th those are fundamental factors that are so important yeah so you know you remember why you're doing that but if you have your own personal goals as well um i never used to do vision boards or anything like that but i started doing them about six or seven years ago and the first year that i did a vision board i actually achieved everything i put up on that board within 12 months and i was just completely astounded i was just, i was <laughs> Like, I couldn't believe it. Now, they don't always work. I mean, if we take the last 12 months, for example, mm -hmm. things are a little bit different to where I expected them to be this year. But it's always good to have that kind of, you understand why you're motivated to do what you do in the first place. And it can be value-based or it can be personal accomplishment or achievement-based. Um, but just, just you know, have, have a vision of some sort. And do you know what? I give myself days off. So yeah. if I'm not feeling it, then I take myself off somewhere. I'll take the pooch out. I have a toy poodle. Don't know if you can hear me in the background here, pacing at the moment. Um, but I'll take the pooch out. I'll go to the caravan. I have a caravan that will get away over in Blackpool that um, I go to and some great walks around, around the mirror or the beach. Um, I'll take myself off to Lake District. And, and for me, it's that time away to reflect. Look at why I'm feeling unmotivated because... I like variety and usually when I'm I get my ikigai out I do my ikigai and see where I'm I'm on the table and what's what am I doing that I shouldn't be doing and what am I not doing that I should be doing and once I get back into that a couple of days and I'm I'm back at full steam ahead and and I'm back engaged and where I need to be but everyone needs a break sometimes you know when you when you're running a business it's very difficult to switch off so mm -hmm. give yourself that space and and go and switch off and allow yourself that space and, and away from everybody. Take yourself away for a few days. I've done it for the last six, seven years, maybe longer, where I go yeah. to the Lake District twice a year and I, I work from the lakes on, on the business and I reflect in six months' time on the business. So I'm used to doing that. Yeah. Do you know what? I got motivated from the team. As I said, I can't speak highly enough about them. They're a motivated bunch of people and they gave me motivation. But I was lucky. I had the best business partner in the world. She wasn't only my best friend, as you say, or one of my best friends, but she was brilliant. So therefore, we were lucky we had each other. If something personal was happening in our personal life or anything, you had the other one to, to step in. They'll give you a nudge and say, look, come on, you know, we've got to get on with this. So I was lucky and we've had loads of laughs along the way. You know, it wasn't all serious all the time. So very very lucky with the motivation that i had behind me well i don't always feel it you know sometimes i do get up and think oh i wish i hadn't got up and it is difficult at times uh so since it's a personal interview and you've asked me uh so for me i take the dog for a walk because there's just this unconditional love in a dog's eyes the dog is always pleased to see me first thing in the morning uh even if I locked him in the garage by accident for a couple of hours, he's still pleased to see me. Uh, I can't do the same thing for my wife. If I locked her in the garage for two hours, I'm not sure the outcome would be the same. So for me, I never felt worse after taking the dog for a walk, even if the weather was uh, terrible. Now, I'm sure that's not very helpful to lots of people watching, but um, 
you know, other people will go to the gym, uh, run around the block. Uh, but for me, this kind of <laughs> unconditional uh, love from an animal uh, is is something that that I think does get me motivated and kind of ease me into the day. Uh, That's fair. A couple of other people have said similar things. So walking the dog, getting outside, going on the moors, getting up a hill. Those, so I guess for you, it's a combination of being with some something which utterly loves you and doing something actually which is probably quite good for your system, isn't it? A bit of fresh air. Yeah, I think that's, I think that's right. Yeah, no, I do think that's right. Um, cool. So that's why the um, sales of animals went up so much in lockdown, was we all recognised that what an amazing asset they are in our lives. And just hopefully lots of people will continue to work from home so they can, you know, still love their pets. I don't think that'll happen. I think the pets, a lot of the pets will become discarded and, uh, and haven't been acclimatised and, and trained properly. And it's, uh, there's, a, there's, a, there's a sadness, really. And I think there's still an enormous amount of fallout that we'll see. Mm -hmm. So I think whilst we will get back to normal and people won't necessarily work from home, they'll come back to the office. But um, I do think there's, um, there's still a sort of big hill to climb before we get society mentally back into the place they were before. Mm. Yeah, that's good. Again, a very good mm. question. I'm, I think I'm quite blessed in that I'm, I'm, I'm a fairly motivated person or very fairly positive person all, all the time. I, I see the glass half, half full always, never see it half empty. Uh, that's an FD's job, isn't it, to see the glass half empty. Um, so I, I tend to have a very positive outlook on things, uh, on life. Um, I'm always looking for the positive rather than the negative, so that, that all helps. But I think... Yeah, you know, like everybody, there's going to be bad days, isn't there? And I think if 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 I'm not feeling particularly great, it probably take a walk, take a break, um, walk out the room that I'm in, and have a good talking to myself, and sort of dig my, sort of dig deep and um, back to my lists. Mm -hmm. If I'm feeling particularly not really up for it, and I look at my list and think, well, actually, is there something on that list today? that I'd enjoy doing, maybe do that first and then come back to the rest. Um, but it's really about self-discipline, I think. I think it's, uh, you know, sometimes you you might not sleep great, but you just got to sh shake yourself out of it. So I have to say, I, um, I mentioned it before, I love nature. And if you're in the city with nature, it's not so much um, yeah, easy sometimes. But for me, uh, walking the dog, going uh, for a run, uh, getting my head clear is something um, I, I need to do, do to, to get back into a good mood and back into perspective. Sometimes, you know, going, if, if, if you're struggling with something, something is not going so well, um, you have to, on one hand side, also sometimes accept it, accept it uh, but at the same time, to get back into the driver's seat and the get back into the positive uh, to do uh, mood, um, I I need to go out um, mm. in nature, walk um, or um, do sports. Uh, so also sports is my driver where uh, you know I get get out of it, get get, get into a new perspective, um, and um, then um, yeah I play tennis. So then sometimes you know I just go out and 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 and. Uh, look for uh, a partner to to play with me and uh, then it cleans my my heart i i get back into uh, another perspective um and then uh with with either nature or having done sports uh, that um always um is is a good addition and um uh, adds positive energy um to me and then the bigger problems i felt before are not anymore that big and and then i i also see clearer and then can structure it again and 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 also face then the next steps uh, one has to do because difficulties are there one has to you know you can't erase them they are there you have to face them um but um you also have to be constructive so uh if i can't do that anymore then i I step out and, as I described, nature or 
doing sports is then my solution in most of the cases um yeah i'll go for a run i go um yeah i know myself that um if i don't go running um things get me down mm -hmm. um I, my husband even says to me go for a run will you <laughs> getting on my nerves you know have you been for your run today um so i do definitely do google a lot so sometimes I'm, I lose my motivation because I don't know what to do. I don't know how to deal with something or I don't know the answer or something or I've forgotten. It could be a bit, you know, it's been a while or something. So I do a lot of Googling um, and I'm researching and things like that. And, and do you know that, that, that before you know it, you've got, you've got the bones of something. Um, you've looked here, you've looked there, you've got some ideas. Um, you're looking at, well, I mean, on LinkedIn, for example, you know, there's people have always got something. I like people's posts, you know, they've always got something to say. Um, they're always commenting on something. So, you know, I pull stuff from here, there and everywhere. And that then you've got something And because what, what I'm not good at is if I haven't got any any mm. ideas or thoughts or anything, the mo that can give me some motivation. So I tend to do that. Um, and, yeah, then just just chatting, chatting to people, talking um the issues through. Um, if I'm fed up about room, talking it through before you know it. Mostly, I'm, I lose motivation if I don't know what to do. That, yeah, that, that's it. So, so chatting that spark. Through, yeah, yeah, it does. And all of a sudden, uh, that that and I, I get I get that through talking to anybody. You know, uh, just on the phone through mm. work and Zoom and stuff like that. But you know, like I said, when I go running, I often run with friends and. They've all got a very different slant on it. You know, I've got such a mixture of friends working in so many different types of businesses. Yeah, yeah. And th they've all got a different slants on it. And that's so, that's really, really useful. So I find that, I find that really motivating. Yeah. Um, and then, um, I don't do it so much these days, but I always used to, um, in my, I'd say, right, I want a better car or I want a holiday or I want a better house. Yes. Or I want to, like at the moment, is I want to buy another business. Yeah. So how how can I get motivated to do that? What's going to inspire me? What in what's interesting about the money? I, I think when you um, sometimes I, I think this is quite common for entrepreneurs. Really, you're only excited at the entrepreneurial stage once things are starting to work themselves. Then you need to do something else. You need to start again. You need yeah. to do, do something else. So I tend to invent myself projects. People say to me, "Well, what? Why? Because because isn't it funny when you're in the height of something, you're really stressed. You sort of go, oh, 'Oh, I'm never doing this again. Oh, I don't want to do that. If I ever say I'm going to do that, you know, I want to go off on my yacht and have a rest. You know, tell me to do that. Soon as I'm in the position where I might think about going off on the yacht and having a rest, then I start inventing new projects for myself. So that that's yeah." You know, honestly, it's very rare. <laughs> I've, ne I've never seen you negative. Yeah, <laughs> it, it's just I've, I've had three jobs, the, the police, the China trade, and this long recruiting journey. Um, and I've always enjoyed every day. But there was one point when I was switching between, I'd just become a management employee for Recruit Holdings, basically. I was a founder and then a management employee. And I was reporting upwards and inwards, and I was being measured. Um, and I talked to the then Japanese head of the international recruitment business, wonderful guy's name is Murai San, he's now chairman of the J League in, in Japan. Um, and we just had a conversation around it and he created a platform with me where I could work as an insider outsider for recruit, set up my own company, but still be very much part of recruit, work solely with them, developing leadership academies, and, doing a lot of board advisory work and m and and stuff like that. And that work worked extremely well. I think if that hadn't happened, I would have I would have struggled. Um, but generally, if it's kind of like a micro moment, I would just create some space. Um, I'll just create some time. I'll, I'll find an opportunity to, to, to exercise, to get out, to do something, take my mind off uh, something in a work context, which is, which is bothering me. For me, the... Adrenaline that I get from a run or a bike ride or something like that—that that, that kind of energy charge that I get just always helps me over any short-term ups that I face. 
Um, I suppose I, I rely on the um, the fact that normally I can get myself out of tough situations fairly easily. But there are times when, yeah, it's it's normally down to a lack of exercise, not getting enough sleep, not eating the right foods. Um, so I will, I, I think now, perhaps in the past it was books, now it's listening to podcasts, um, you know, it's just spent just taking time out and, and just completely shutting off. Um, but I, I don't think I've got a magic formula. I, I think um, it's different for every person. But but for me, I suppose I always know I will get back there, and and normally actually quite quickly with one of those with one of those methods. Be back on track. Music can change my state. So if I'm not feeling it that day, I will put on some loud happy tunes um, to try and change my mental state. Um, I write a gratitude journal every day, so I might do some extra um, journaling in my gratitude journal, but exercise would usually get me back on. But also going back to my 90 day plan. So if I'm not feeling it, I will be thinking, okay, well, why did I want to, you know, I don't want to do X, Y, Z, but why did I want to achieve it in the first place? You know, and if I can understand my reasons for doing something and my why reconnect with it then you tend to find you're re-energized but a lot of the time I tend to find that for me personally and I, and I think for a lot, of, a lot of other people when they're not motivated it will usually be some other reason like perhaps you've been burning it a bit too much fatigued tired you know and it's it's important to listen to your body as well and think actually perhaps I need to have a day off especially as a business owner or or switch off for an afternoon and then come back fighting tomorrow yeah. um it, it's not normally a problem um i don't normally have a problem with motivation or self-motivation when it is um what do i actually do i'll take a break um i'll have a smoke do some exercise eat something drink something I won't flog a dead horse. I learned that early on in my, uh, as a recruitment consultant in the 80s. Um, just some days it just doesn't work. So it's just not happening. Um, and you know that if you do the things you were expecting to be doing that day, it's going to go wrong. You just have that feeling. It's mm -hmm. very rare, but it used to happen to me occasionally as a recruitment consultant, and as a manager. So I just take a break, do something different. And um, that for me will then, it allows me to recalibrate. Yeah. Um, it never lasts for long. Um, it can be, you know, minutes um, sometimes. It's uh, and also you the, the benefit of of uh, experience or age rather is experience. And you you you've seen it that there aren't many things I see now that I haven't seen at some stage, and I've seen far far worse. So mm -hmm. somebody's tearing the hair out and say actually. You know, if you want to know a story and tell them about something that's really happened. So don't don't flog a dead horse. If it's not working, change it. Do something different. Personally, how do I turn it around if I'm not feeling great? Um, do you know what works for me often? Having a cold shower. <laughs> different. It really does. Yeah, I, I did a um, I did a 90 day reset at the start of the year with um with a great guy called called Andrew Silito. If you haven't come across him, he's um yeah, yes. really really good yeah. bloke. Um, yeah, and and one of the the key tenets of that was have a cold shower every day, and I'm sure a lot of people are thinking it like I was thinking it, which is absolutely no way. Particularly, you know, on a cold morning and you're in a hot shower, but um, it, it's almost that sense if I can overcome that that trepidation, I've got to do that for you know 15 to 30 seconds. If I achieve that, uh, all bets are off now. I can do whatever I want. So I found that was a, was a really really good way of almost feeling like I've overcome a bit of a challenge to do that. Um, the other thing I think I do if I'm not feeling up for it is just to probably just take a step back and just reflect on, on what I've got in my life. And, you know, it's easy to get bogged down sometimes in problems at work or at home. But actually, when you reflect on it, you alluded to this at the start of this, of this talk, yeah. you know, not that to each person, their problems are important. Of course, they are. And everyone's, you know, mental health is a massive issue this day and age. But I used to think about the pandemic, you know, when I might bemoan my Zoom signal dropping every now and then there was single parents in flats with four kids that couldn't leave and it's sometimes sometimes a sense of perspective i know sometimes it's a tricky thing this day and age because you're not allowed to you know be honest about some of these things but <laughs> i'm just saying what i think you know sometimes you need to sit back and go you know what maybe you haven't got it so bad and 
And actually, you've got a lot to be thankful for. And there's a lot of people that probably mm. would be in this situation wishing they were in your shoes. So, um, and if that fails, then jump in the cold shower for 30 seconds. That, that works. And I mean, like, fully crank it to, to the end. To basically. total cold. Yeah, no messing around. Like, go, go hard or go home. <laughs>